Hi, I'm Brett Sharon now with Magni Gyro US. Magni Gyro is the largest supplier of gyro planes in the United States and has been for the last few years. I'm at the Oshkosh show, uh, EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and I'm thrilled to be standing in front of our brand new creation, the Magni M26 Victor. Uh, and by the way, the Victor comes from Vittorio Magni, who started Magni Gyro in the 1980s. Uh, Piero and Luca, uh, his two sons, dedicated this gyroplane to him. This is the first M26 in the United States. It's only the second one built. So let me take you through what's here. Uh, it was literally, it arrived in the United States uh, two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, we got it set up for flight, uh, for airworthiness in the United States in that time. We did some flight checkouts to make sure it was going to fly okay. Uh, and believe it or not, Mark Sprague, our dealer in Gulf Shores out of Alabama, flew it up here yesterday and landed about two in the afternoon. So it's, it's had a long run from Gulf Shores up. By the way, his, uh, his typical cruise speed on the way up is between 105 and 110 miles per hour. So it's a screamer compared to uh, some of the other gyros that are out there, the M24 that's next to us. Because of that wide cockpit and wind resistance, it typically cruises in the 95 mile an hour range. You can get it up to 100, but the fuel burn, of course, increases. The reason this one is so much faster, it's got an enclosed canopy that comes down, so the slipstream is so much better on a tandem with a canopy. The M16 that we've got is very similar, but it doesn't have the canopy. Um, its top speed is not as fast as this aircraft. This is about 15 miles an hour faster than our fastest aircraft. So let's do a walkthrough of the M6, M26 Victor, and let me show you what's here. So again, I'm gonna start at the front of this aircraft. There is a tie down for the rotor. This one happens to be orange, and it's got a great Magni Gyro logo on it. Um, but essentially, the, it holds the rotor from spinning. If this wasn't on here and we had any wind, the rotor would start spinning on its own. It's got a really beautiful uh, roller bearing up at the top that's got very, very little friction. So if I just push that a little bit, this thing would start turning. And you can see quickly that it would get around about 90% of the turn, and it would hit the flag back there. So we keep these down so they don't hit people, and people don't bang into them but that's what this hold down is for on the front of the gyro there's a vent here that allows air to come into the cockpit to keep the pilot cool and on gyroplanes this is a standard yaw string essentially when you're flying air is rushing up the gyro and this string should be straight if your aircraft is in proper yaw configuration and not canted left or right or slipping if you've got a situation like this or like this you're applying the wrong rudder or not sufficient rotor to the right side and you need to correct that. So that keeps the gyroplane aligned. Um, I did have a friend of mine uh, whose son was flying in the front seat and his dad got back in the front seat to fly as the pilot and said, Jimmy, where, where's the, the yaw string? Oh, I just took that off. I thought it was a piece of string that was just stuck on the windshield. True story. So they had, a, they had to put another string on, but this one's actually mounted with a little frame, so it looks a little bit more like it's supposed to be there. All right, move around this side of the gyro. We'll come back to the opening in a bit. Um, really amazing uh, plexiglass. It has vents on this side for both the pilot and the passenger. They're called ram air vents. As the air rushes past the gyro, it comes in here and keeps the cabin nice and cool. Uh, and that's really needed in the summer. Otherwise, you can bake inside. Uh, standard strobes. The gyroplane comes out here for two reasons. One, it's better aerodynamics. Second, it provides room for the passenger legs. And I'll show you on the other side when we get here how the passenger legs come in and where they sit on the rudders and what this provides, but it's just more space. This gyroplane, like the M24, uh, has a 4130 chrome molly steel frame, US steel that's shipped over to Italy, factory welded by a licensed and certified airplane welder, and that's what provides the frame stability for this gyro. Uh, standard access ports for accessing uh, the engine when you want to look at inspections, uh, when you want to do some maintenance on it, these all come off with the quick, tw quick twist screws. Uh, this gyroplane also has coolers. There's an air uh, water cooler on the top and an oil cooler below. A fan right here that actually ha makes sure that the air is flowing well over both of the units. In the back, 
Uh, this aircraft also uses the 915 IS Rotax engine, uh, fuel injected turbocharged, 140 horsepower. We're also using the Duke. Uh, Flash two four blade propeller on this gyroplane. Again, for this engine and this configuration, this propeller provides uh, the best performance with the least noise. Uh, propellers are the largest noise generation part of a gyroplane, not the engine. So when you do noise testing for FAA type certification, the type of blades that you have on makes a big difference in terms of how much noise the gyroplane generates and is it going to pass the uh, standard standard noise test that the FAA requires. Uh, tail on this, a little bit different than the M24, it's taller because of the frame, both the tips and the center and a little bit larger rudder. And that's needed to keep the gyroplane nice and straight to take care of any yaw effects that happen as you're flying. You can see this tail, very similar to the M24, is a straight out tail. Uh, we have it below the body of the engine. Again, it's not as big of a problem on the tandem aircraft like this one, but we want to make sure that there's good airflow over the tail no matter what the engine speed. You know, in flight, the engine's going fast, that's great, but if you're coming in for a landing or a takeoff, uh, you might not have the kind of airflow you want over the tail. So with the tail down low, we get really good airflow coming in, good controllability and good stability from the tail. This tail is also significantly far back from the engine, providing good stability so we avoid what are, what's called PIO or pilot-induced oscillation, also call, called porpoising, where the gyro can go up and down because as a pilot we're over-controlling to try to prevent this. The old gyrocopters that didn't have a tail like this, that was a pretty big problem that had to be dealt with. This tail that Mr. Magny designed back in the 80s took care of that problem. And this is very similar to when you throw a dart at a dartboard with the fins in the back to keep the dart straight and level. That's essentially what this tail does. It gives incredibly good stability. Uh, this gyro in terms of the keel and then bolted onto the keel, the fiberglass reinforced uh, struts for the wheels. These can take a huge amount of pressure, hard landings without any deformation at all. We have wheel pants on the wheels to give us a little bit better wind resistance, a little bit faster flying speed and less fuel burn. The gyro itself, front and back, left and right, uh, there are steps to get in. And that's about it for getting in. Uh, rudder pedals on this gyroplane are also fully adjustable. Six positions, three forward, three back. Uh, for me, these rudders, again, are a little bit too far forward, so I would have to pull the pins, turn them around, and move them forward to fly this aircraft. Uh, stick, very similar to what we've got in the M24. It moves left, right, up, and down to control the rotor disc, uh, as on the M24. Uh, layout of this panel is a little bit different because it's smaller. So this has a Garmin display in it and one of the new Canardias for the engine. It's got standard trig radios over here on the left, uh, rotor speed here, uh, compass, regular magnetic compass, of course clock, uh, airspeed in kilometers per hour, uh, vertical speed indicator, uh, and altitude, altimeter. Down here all the components for, of course, landing and nav and strobe and all of that your fuses here, and this gyroplane has an electric rotor brake on it instead of the mechanical one that we were talking about earlier on the 24. It's got a standard throttle control here, similar to the 24, and as I squeeze, that's the brake for the wheel. So as I'm taxiing, I want to make sure that I can control the speed of the gyroplane with this brake and with the throttle. So I'm going to pull the throttle back and squeeze if I want to slow down, release the brake and push the throttle forward if I want to speed up. I'm not going to close the canopy because it's too hot, but the canopy comes over the top of my head. Really significant room in the way this gyroplane was designed. There's about a foot and a half clearance between the top of my head and, and the bottom of the canopy. I'm relatively small, uh, so a taller person, uh, still no big deal. We've got uh, six foot people that actually can sit in this, and there's still clearance above the top of the head. So what we're going to demonstrate now is talking about my height in the gyroplane. I'm 5'5". Five five. We're going to have Mike Trudell get in the gyroplane. Six foot, who's six feet. And 
we're going to show you what it's like with a six foot person in the cockpit. Have at it. And yes, I am going to close the canopy on him, but I'm not going to roast him. You ready? Yep. Okay, so if you come around and take a look at Mike from the side, you can still see there's five or six inches above the top of his head as a six foot person. Still plenty of room and you can see in the back also plenty of room. So again, the, the really beautiful job that Magni did designing this aircraft both for the pilot passenger inside and for the aerodynamics that are required to fly a tandem gyroplane. Thanks, Mike. But it's one of the challenges of designing a tandem gyroplane with a canopy that comes down because the height of the seat, the height of the canopy above my head, and how all this affects the wind coming over the gyroplane and how it flies all intersect. So it's, a, it's probably the most challenging aircraft in the gyroplane to design, a tandem gyroplane with a canopy. Uh, and you'll see that uh, some of the aircraft have uh, nuances of flying that you have to get comfortable with if you're flying a tandem canopy gyroplane. This one is actually really stable. Um, Mark's comment after flying it up yesterday, this felt just like a little rocket ship. He put it in gear and it just flew. And not typical with a tandem gyroplane with a canopy. Uh, they have a lot more yaw characteristics that you have to deal with, especially on takeoff and landing. We're not experiencing in that with this. I'm gonna jump out and then get in the back to show you the back seat. This is typically the passenger seat on the gyro. Uh, I've got rudder pedals here so I can control the gyro from the back as well, although this is not meant as a tandem gyroplane for training purposes. It's meant as a tandem driver plane, gyroplane for flying places. It does have a very small stick in the back, so if I'm back here and I need to control it or the pilot wants me to take control, I can, but it's not a full side stick like you've got in the front. I do have an airspeed indicator back here, which is great. I also have another Canardia back here, engine display with other information. I've got the same kind of seatbelt system, four point, that's up front. And I've also got a throttle and brake back here, so I can control the gyro with that from the back end of the aircraft as well. Again, canopy comes down. I've got my own venting here. And just sitting in a seat, super comfortable. Uh, it's not as wide and as roomy as the side-by-side -side M24 that we were talking about earlier. So this really becomes a decision on why do you want the gyroplane? Where are you flying it? Um, a lot of couples like to have the side-by-side -side configuration so that they can talk. They're familiar with side-by-side -side configuration from fixed wing days, so they want to stay with that. So that's why the M24 is such a big seller. This one's brand new, so don't know yet what the big market appeal will be yet, if there's going to be a lot of people that want this. This is a great aircraft if you want the tandem design, but also want the canopy for the cold environment. So up here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, probably anything north of the middle of the country or up, this is great in the winter. I did my initial training in an, uh, an open cockpit M16, which is similar to this with no canopy. And when it gets down to the high 40 degrees Fahrenheit range, even bundled up with motorcycle riding gear on, uh, you get up to altitude, you're going at 70 or 80 miles an hour, it gets cold. And I was able to do 45 minutes to an hour of training at a time before uh, I had to say it's time to go down. What's funny is my instructor was in the back and it's windier in the back than the front. So he was usually the one that was either asking me to slow down or let's, let's take a break for today. Um, but this is one of the things that this gyroplane gets around. You can fly this in the winter. I'm Brett Sharanow with Magni Gyro USA. You can get on the Magni website at magnigyro.com, M-A-G-N-I-G-Y-R-O.com. You can look at all of the aircraft that we've got for sale in the U.S. Look forward to seeing you there or at the Oshkosh Show. Thanks a lot.